Hey guys, this is Nathan and welcome to the Gaming 4. Today in this Unturned Dev Kit tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the Landscape tool. Now, uh, to start off, where you need to find the Landscape tool is under the Windows, and then you got to go to the Landscape tool. And I actually already have one open, I just have it uh, stuck right here on the sidebar. Now, there are a few things that you need to do before you can actually use the Landscape tool. And uh, the first one of those is you need to have a landscape object in your hierarchy now as you guys can see this is the hierarchy tab and this will show everything that you have inside of your world including objects you know your landscape stuff like that and um, in order to get a landscape onto there what you have to do is you have to go to the type browser that should be another window uh, as you guys can see we've got the hierarchy and the type browser window you'll need both of those and inside the type browser you need to just click on landscape or double click either way uh, all you need to do is get one of them in your hierarchy now as far as I know you're not supposed to have more than one and I actually don't know how to delete them like I've tried before and I cannot delete this landscape so be careful about getting more than one out there you only need one I'm not sure what will happen if you have more than one but uh, generally you really only need one so when you first add the landscape to the hierarchy, it will automatically uh, give you a tile. And pretty much what the tile is, it is it is a location on your map, like you can create multiples of them using the tile tool here. And it's a location on your map where you can create your landscape splat and height map and stuff like that. It's sort of just a large section of landscape. So by default, it will add a tile in here and um, if it overlaps with the normal one I think you pretty much want to get rid of that so placing and deleting tiles are pretty simple actually all you have to do is press 3 select the tile tool and then click on the landscape and pretty much this will just create one of these blank areas that you can work on now you can deselect these and at that point it won't be selected and if you select it again and you want to get rid of it you can just press the delete key and you guys can tell that if you have it selected if you see it uh, highlighted in yellow so pressing the delete key will get rid of that and obviously any changes on there will be gone now just a warning um, if you look into transactions uh, you can only see um, spawn landscape and that sort of thing you cannot undo deletion of tiles so if you've worked on this tile and you've got some good height maps and some good materials painted on there if you delete it I do not think you can undo that so be very careful when deleting your tiles alright so once you create a tile uh, using the rest of the tools is actually pretty simple so uh, as you guys can see if you've got the landscape tool selected we do have some hotkeys here uh, one will put you into height map mode two will put you into splat map mode and three will put you into tile mode and of course you guys can place multiples of these and I guess create a good background for your map but for this tutorial I'm just gonna be focusing on one right now so I'm just gonna work on one of these so also something you might notice is that you've got some other options and buttons down here underneath your tile and you've got the reset height map reset splat map and normalize splat map so pretty much what these do reset height map is going to reset the height on it so let's say you've drawn some hills if you press the reset height map button it'll flatten those all and it'll go back to where it started reset splat map so pretty much the splat map has to do with materials and so resetting the splat map will remove all the materials you have on your tile and for the last one normalize splat map I'm not really sure what it does so let's press one and that is the hotkey to get into the height map tool and once we are here um, we're faced with sort of a little draw thing and there are also some hotkeys with this now I don't know if you guys interface looks exactly like mine but um, I know compared to the one Nelson has because I saw one of the videos he posted mine does look a little different so please let me know in the comments if my uh, interface here looks different so first of all one of the good hotkeys to know is the B hotkey so if you hold B and you drag out it actually changes the size of your tool this is about the same as using the slider to change the size and the normal editor so let's say I want to keep my size like that you can let go of B and it'll be set at that size Another good uh, hotkey is the F hotkey, and that controls the falloff. Now, pretty much what the falloff has to do is it adjusts the strength of the tool itself. So any of the area inside the inner circle is going to be at 100% strength, and any area outside is going to be at a lower strength. So if you want to make a nice rounded hill, you don't want the falloff to be all the way out, 
because that'll be that'll make more of a cone something like this or like a cylinder as you guys can see it's very steep hills something like that if you want to make it more rounded you're just gonna make the fallout a little bit farther in the center and that'll give you a better slope alright so another thing you guys may have noticed is that uh, these mountains that I'm drawing are drawing very slowly and that is because my strength is at 0 0.05 now the way you change the strength is with V and this one works with color the more green the color is the higher the strength is the less green and the more red the lower the strength and actually this actually decreases and increases based on how far away your cursor is towards the center so as your cursor gets closer to the center the strength gets lower as it gets farther away the strength gets higher so as you guys can see now that the strength is set at one you can see that up here in the top right the tool is gonna make large amount of changes very quickly and of course you guys can use control Z or you can go into the transactions and undo some of the stuff there if you don't like something also really quickly just to test it really quick let's go to the tile and let's reset the hats the height map I just want to show you guys what this does it will set it all back to zero as you can see it's all gone so by default the first tool that you start with is the adjust tool and pretty much it's the same as the W hotkey in the normal editor and just the same as that it's the Q hotkey in the dev kit editor so by default if you press Q you'll be using the adjust tool which moves the landscape up and down and also something I almost forgot to mention is that if you hold shift while using the adjust tool it moves the landscape downwards besides the adjust tool there is two others and there is the flatten and there is the smooth now E by default is the smoothing tool and we're gonna go over this one next now one of the differences I saw between Nelson's GUI and mine is that his smoothing option had a lot more detail to it you, there's a bit more customizability and that is one of the things that I'm actually kind of confused about because there's just straight up some tools missing but generally how the smooth tool works is uh, the more the higher the strength so if we want to make the strength at one it's gonna smooth faster the lower the strength as in like maybe 0.1 or a little lower it's gonna make it smooth a lot slower also the size affects it that just affects the amount of area that you're gonna smooth at a time and F also affects the fall off and pretty much how that works is the area in the very small center gets smooth faster than the areas on the outside so the last tool within the landscape tab is the flatten tool and this one's pretty fun to use uh, it's pretty simple as well and the hotkey for that one is W so the way this one works is uh, wherever you draw it flattens it to the same height and there's actually a really cool thing with this one if you hold alt and left click it'll actually set that location to the current height so for example if I want to left click on here it'll set it down lower to the original height and if I want to left click on this hill it'll set it a little higher uh, the same rules sort of apply you've got the radius you've got the strength um, if you lower the strength it's gonna make the edges a little rounder a little less sharp uh, also we've got the fall off and that sort of works with that as well alright so let's reset the height map and let's work on one last tool so for this tool I'm just gonna need a little bit of a hill to show you guys how it works and this tool works with the hotkey R and this is the ramp tool this is probably one of the coolest new ones actually so the nice thing about this tool is uh, well you pretty much make ramps with it now uh, the way it works is you click on one location drag to another and it'll sort of flatten that area out to create a ramp or a nice straight line so uh, let's get a couple more hills over here and let's try some differences with it so along with the other tools there's a couple other things that you can do with the ramp one of them is the strength this just increases or decreases the amount of strength the ramp is gonna have also radius is another good one with uh, the hotkey B this pretty much adjusts how wide your ramp is going to be or how skinny your ramp is going to be so for example if we want to have a really small ramp here we can just make a really tiny ramp right there or if we want to make it wider we can make a big ramp right here and the one last hotkey that you need to know is the fall off hotkey that pretty much has to do with the amount of area that is 100 percent strength and you of course adjust that using the hotkey of F so you can make a larger area that is at full strength or you can make a lower area that is full strength and that'll just you know sort of adjust the way that the ramp is made 
All right, so that's pretty much it for the height map tools. Let us move on to the splat map tools. All right, so one of the first things we see with the splat map tool is this huge list of materials. Now this actually includes, I think, all of the materials. If you guys want to look for some more, um, this is where you find them. You got to go to the content browser and you can open that up using the windows and the panels right here, the content browser window, third one down. Then you can want to go to assets, resources, bundles, landscapes, and materials. And then once you get into here, there's a bunch of other folders with all sorts of materials in here. Um, I think you might be able to drag these here at some point, but at this point, I don't think that's a possibility because I think by default, they're all right here listed for you. So in order to start placing material, uh, all you have to do is click on one of them, let's say farm wheat zero zero, and click on the tile you want to place it on. Now something you'll notice is that it automatically fills that entire tile with the first resource you choose. Now also something you'll notice if you go back to tile, you'll see that farm wheat zero zero is listed right here. Now if we for some reason don't like this material or we want to get rid of it, you can actually get rid of press this X right here and that'll remove that material so that you can have a new default material. So let's choose a good default material and let's make that grass. So we'll just make the normal grass as the default material. Now, just like the height map tools, there are some hotkeys that control the width and the strength and the fall off, and those should be the same. So B is the width of the tool, F is the fall off, V is the strength, and they all work the same as with the height map. So in order to paint a second material onto your landscape, all you have to do is select the material right here and then start painting it on. And if you actually check back on the tile page, you'll actually notice that the second uh, material is added here. And also something to note is that you can only have a maximum of eight materials per tile. So as you can see, there's zero through seven. If you count them up, that's eight separate materials. You cannot have more than that. And you know, if you try to paint more than that, it'll just ignore you. You can only paint that many. So besides that, uh, the, the painting of the materials is pretty normal actually. It's very similar to the normal uh, editor. And of course you can customize like the fall off and you know stuff like that so you can make it a little more gradual. And you know you can increase the strength, decrease the strength, you know to make it really slow to paint on materials. You can do all sorts of stuff to customize the material painting process. Now besides the radius fall off and strength, there are, is two more or three more sort of options here. There's the max preview samples. I think that controls the quality of the materials. I don't think you need to mess with that though. It doesn't really affect the way you paint them. Also, there's the use weight target and the weight target. Now these are both really freaking cool. And these give you a way to sort of partially paint materials on top of other materials. So if you look closely at where we painted this, what you can start to notice is that there's areas around the center that is partially stone, partially grass. And that's pretty much what the weight target controls. So if we want to manually choose our weight target, what we can do is set a value here, let's say 0.5, and we can click the use weight target button. Now what this will do is whenever we paint down our stone, it'll use a weight target of 0.5. And as you guys can see, it's painting very slowly here. Um, and that's because we probably should increase the strength. So we'll increase that a little bit and get it to paint a little faster. And what you guys can start to see is that you start to have a 50-50 mix of stone and grass. And this is a really cool way of just adding sort of textural effects to your landscape. Um, obviously you might want to mess with this a little bit, get uh, maybe a better weight target, maybe of 7.7 7 instead of 0. 0.5, and you can just mess around and create different adjustments of the weight target. Also something that you can do uh, that allows you to not use the check mark for the use weight target is you can hold down control. If you hold down control, it'll automatically paint it to the weight target that you already set. So for example, if we set it at you know 0.5 again, because that one's good for our, uh, illustrating, all we have to do is hold down control and it will never paint above 0.5. And also you can paint over the previously painted stone and it'll change that, that stone's weight to 0.5. So if you want to paint over the previous stone with the new weight, you can do that using control as well. Also guys, one last thing, I do want to kind of prove a point that you can't use more than eight materials on here. So um, I'm going to count them off. We've got one, two, three, four. Uh, we're going to put down another type of sand. 
you guys can see those are a little bit different five six another type of grass grass dead and that should be all we can place so if we try to place down uh, let's say gravel it should not work for us as you guys can see I'm pressing a uh, left click and it's not painting and that is because if we go back over to our tile uh, they're all filled up so there's nothing we can do about this except for remove one and guys do keep in mind it is kinda limited that you only can have eight materials per tile but that is also per tile so let's say I want to place another tile over here so let's place a tile next to it and let's say I want to use completely different materials I can do that you know I can use maybe snow on this tile or road or something like that that I do not have to have on the other ones so just keep that in mind you can mix and match just know that eight per tile is the limit and last but definitely not least uh, if you do happen to mess up your uh, textures and your splat map just know that there is a reset splat map tool here and that will get rid of all these splat map values for your tile and you know from there you can just have a clean start so anyway guys hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to use the height map splat map and the tile tools all of these can be found within the landscape tool and hopefully uh, this will help you guys start making good backgrounds for your maps also guys uh, just know that I may have missed a few steps because the dev kit is not really well documented so if I do happen to miss something or you know a good functionality that you guys know of please let me know in the comments and I will try to touch on it in the next video perhaps speaking of things I probably missed in the last video where I was showing you guys how to navigate the layout of the dev kit there was a few things that I kinda missed one of which was the glitchiness of this screen right here there's actually a way to undo that and that is to hit the tilde key and that'll pretty much set you back to your normal screen and as far as I know there's no downsides to that there's no glitchiness after you do that also if you do want to see your setup again you can just hit tilde and it'll bring it back up so that's sort of a miscellaneous sort of fact that somebody told me in the comments. Also, if you guys do use the normal editor, for example, let me hit just edit here. And once you're in the editor, if you do want to see some of the dev kit tools, you can hit tilde. Now, the downside to this is you don't get the nice movement options. You have to use the normal movement options. And I don't think you can use the actual dev kit tools. You can't use any of them, but you can see your dev kit layout. So just in case you guys wanted to do that, that is an option as well. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. 